This video is brought to you by Sailrite. Visit sailrite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. Your new Leatherwork sewing machine is now set up and it's ready to use. We recommend watching this entire use video to get the most out of your leather sewing machine. First, we need to remove the sample from under the presser foot. To engage the balance wheel, push the posi pin into any one of the three holes in the Power Plus wheel. Then rotate the balance wheel towards you until the posi pin sinks into a mating hole on the shaft's bushing. Be sure to push it all the way in. To remove the leather from underneath the presser foot, rotate the balance wheel towards you until the needle is out and the take-up arm is at the highest position up. Then lift the presser foot via the lever at the top of the machine and pull the sample out from underneath the presser foot. This leather sample was sewn after the leather work was built at the Sarite facility. A short run of thread was left in the sewing machine to show proper threading. We will remove that. Don't worry, we'll cover threading shortly. Next, we'll show how to remove and fill and then install a bobbin. You can access the bobbin from the slide plate or you can tilt the machine back to gain access to the bobbin. This is typically how most people do it. Or, with the machine sitting flat, you can reach underneath the table and grab the bobbin from there. To remove the bobbin, lift the spring-loaded lever and pull the bobbin case out. With the lever held open, the bobbin is captive in the bobbin case. Release the lever and the bobbin will fall out. It's more than likely that some thread is left on the bobbin from testing at the Sayrite facility. We want to show you how to wind a new bobbin. We'll take one of the four bobbins and the cone of thread that comes with the Leatherwork sewing machine. Place it on the spindle as shown. Thread comes off the top of the cone and passes through the thread stand arm and then through the thread stand post. Now wrap it around the bobbin tensioner. Then pass it through the pigtail as shown. Let's show this process again as a top view. Run the end of the thread under any other threads and then to the bobbin winding spindle. Place a bobbin on the spindle or post, then run the end of the thread through one of the top holes of the bobbin. Hold on to the thread tail briefly and power the machine. Be sure the posi pin clutch is disengaged to wind bobbins. Push the bobbin spindle to the right to engage it and power the sewing machine. Hold on to the tail while making several revolutions. Then stop when the bobbin is semi-full and cut the tail of the thread off close to the bobbin. Continue winding until the bobbin is full. Now you can remove the bobbin from the winder post by pushing the post to the left. Then cut your thread and remove the bobbin from the spindle. Now insert the threaded bobbin into the bobbin case with the thread coming off the left side towards the right side so it spins in a clockwise rotation. Pull the thread through the slit on the edge of the bobbin case. Continue pulling the thread under the tension plate. To test for proper tension, pull on the thread. It should feel like you have a slight amount of tension, like pulling dental floss from a container, and no more. Tilt the sewing machine back and while holding the spring-loaded lever, insert the bobbin onto the spindle of the gib hook. The finger of the bobbin case should point upwards. Leave a tail of about 4 to 6 inches and lower the head back into the tabletop. Now we'll go over threading of your new Leatherwork sewing machine. In the previous chapter for bobbin winding, we already placed a cone of thread on the thread stand. Now we feed it through that post like we did when we wound bobbins, but this time we will not go through the bobbin tensioner, but just the pigtail as shown. Now we'll pass the thread through the three hole thread guide, going through the first hole, skipping the middle one, and then going through the last hole. This makes the thread look like a candy cane stripe. Before passing the thread through the upper tension, be sure the foot lifter is up. This releases the tension discs, as you can see. I typically place my finger on the thread here to tension it, then I can easily slide it between the two tension discs. Here's a side view of the process. Then, on the left side, there's a take-up spring. Lift the thread until it catches in the slot just above the take-up spring. Pull up and down on the thread, and be sure the take-up spring moves or acts just like you see here. If the posi pin isn't engaged, go ahead and engage it like we showed earlier. Now we can roll the balance wheel towards us and down, and that lifts the take-up arm. 
Feed the end of the thread through the take-up arm hole from right coming out the left. Moving it downward, we'll pass it through the needle bar thread guide hole. Now simply push the thread under the end cover as shown here, and finally into the needle eye from left coming out the right. If threaded through the needle eye in the wrong direction, it'll pull the thread from the needle as you sew. Now pass that thread through the hole in the center presser foot. Then use an object to pull it out from underneath the presser feet. To pick up the bobbin thread, hold the needle thread loosely to the side and rotate the Power Plus flywheel by hand towards you until the needle moves down and then back up. As the needle nears the highest point, pull the thread to raise the loop of thread from the bobbin. Pass a screwdriver under the presser foot from right to left. This pulls the thread out from underneath the presser foot. Your machine is now threaded and ready to use. After plugging in the workhorse servo motor and turning it on, we're ready for sewing. Let's practice on some scrap leather, or you can sew on the sample you received. The presser foot is raised here. We will position our leather underneath it and lower the presser foot. The thread from the needle and the bobbin should be behind the foot as you start to sew. Those trailing threads should be held down with your finger for the first few stitches. Then they can be released. If the trailing threads are not held down for your first few stitches, you may get a rat's nest underneath your assembly. Here we've reached a corner where we want to make a 90 degree turn. We want to pivot on the needle so we'll bury the needle and come up about an eighth of an inch. Then we'll lift our presser foot, rotate our leather, lower our presser foot, and then continue to sew. And here we'll do it again at this next corner. We will bury our needle, Make sure our needle comes up about an eighth of an inch. Lift our presser foot, rotate the assembly, lower the presser foot, continue to sew. Rotating on the needle gives us a good sharp turn, but did you know that burying the needle, then coming up about an eighth of an inch, then making the turn, ensures that the corner stitch will not be skipped. When we first started sewing, we did not do any reversing to lock our stitch in place, but here, as we complete going around the entire perimeter of the scrap leather, we're going to do two stitches in reverse. A little bit later on in this video, we'll give you more details about sewing in reverse. This is the top side of our leather, and here's the underside of our leather. It looks great. It is extremely important for you to know that the balance wheel can only be turned towards you as you sew under power. You can see the balance wheel spinning towards you even when sewing in reverse with the stitch length lever. It's the same if you are required to turn the balance wheel by hand. It must be rotated towards you. The Leatherwork sewing machine has so much slow speed control that you may not even have to reach for the balance wheel to rotate it. In fact, if you lightly touch the foot treadle, you can accomplish moving the needle by eighth inch increments, even through super thick, hard leathers like this. If you must rotate it by hand, rotate it towards you. Now let's show what happens if you don't. We'll rotate it in the wrong way. And about a quarter turn, and what happens? We broke the thread, or we damaged the thread, as you can see here. So that's what happens if you turn the balance wheel even a little bit in reverse with the needle buried in the assembly. Next, we'll discuss stitch length. The Sayerite Leatherwork sewing machine comes with what's called the Easy Set Stitch Length Plate. It allows you to set stitch length in forward and in reverse to exactly what you want. We were sewing in about a six millimeter stitch length. We're gonna change it to about a three millimeter stitch length via the thumb screw and approximately three millimeters in reverse via the lower thumb screw. Now you can see our stitch length of six millimeters to the left and the smaller three millimeters to the right. We recommend setting stitch lengths on scrap prior to sewing on your project. By doing this, you can be assured that your forward stitch is equal to your reverse stitch length, if that's desired. To set our forward stitch length, loosen the top thumb screw and slide it up or down to your desired stitch length, then tighten. To set the reverse stitch length, we do the same with the lower thumb screw. When sewing and you come to your last stitch and you want to be precise about sewing in reverse, bury your needle, stop, Press down on the reverse lever in that stop position and then sew in reverse. If adjusted properly, this will create stitches right on top of those previous stitches. 
Yep, those reverse stitches are directly on top of them. Utilizing the stitch length lever, we can sew in reverse. We're going to discuss that next. Here we are sewing in forward. To sew in reverse, simply use the stitch length lever and pull it down. Now we're sewing in reverse. Under power, without stopping, you can move from forward to reverse without having to worry about doing anything different. However, switching from forward to reverse in a stop position is a little bit different. Let's say we want to reverse at a specific point, so obviously we want to sew slowly to that point. Then bury our needle and come up about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. Press down on the reverse lever, hold it down, and sew in reverse. In doing this, your stitches should be directly on top of your previous stitches. By burying the needle and then coming up slightly, this will prevent a skip stitch from possibly happening. Leather sewing requires exacting detail, so we are not sewing from forward to reverse under power, but rather from a stop position. This is the proper way to do it. Let's talk about a little trick. If you're sewing to a corner or a specific spot and you notice that the needle is not going to hit that mark, use the stitch length lever on that very last stitch to change the entry point of the needle. Here's a close-up example. We're sewing to a corner and we want that needle to land at a specific spot, but it's going to land a little bit too far from that spot, so we use the stitch length lever to adjust that position of where the needle will enter. Now, since we used the stitch length lever before the needle entered the leather, we were able to shorten the last stitch, so it landed right where we wanted it to. But doing this also shortens the stitch length. If you are okay with a short stitch at the corner, that technique does work. Removing material from under the presser foot is next. That seems like it should be really easy, but there are some things that you should know. Obviously, before removing your leather or fabric, the needle must be out of the assembly. But did you know the optimal position for the needle or the take-up arm is the uppermost position for removing the fabric or leather? And that slightly jiggling the balance wheel back and forth allows for the thread to easily be released as you pull your leather away. Let's demonstrate what happens when the take-up arm or the needle is not near the uppermost portion when you remove a sewing assembly. Here the needle's not up very high. We'll lift the presser foot and try to remove this assembly. It's nearly impossible to remove, and if you look from underneath, you'll see an extra loop of thread, three threads coming up rather than just one from the bottom area. In fact, it seems jammed up, but all you need to do is rotate the balance wheel towards you, raising the needle and the take-up arm, and the extra loop of thread in the bottom area is released. Yeah, it's that easy. Turning corners is next. We've already touched on making 90 degree turns, but what about gradual turns? Well, as long as the sewing machine is operating, gentle curves like this can be done. You just want to make sure that the sewing machine is sewing as you turn your fabric assembly slowly. But again, if you want to make a 90 degree turn or a very sharp turn, it's best to bury the needle and raise it about an eighth of an inch. Lift your presser foot, rotate the assembly, lower the presser foot, and then continue to sew. What should be avoided at all costs is having a needle only slightly buried in an assembly, and then trying to rotate the assembly. We are doing that exact thing here. You can see the needle is bending back and forth as we turn the leather with the presser foot down. Here you can see the needle bending back and forth. Let's bend the needle and then roll the balance wheel by hand. Here you can see the needle has actually hit something hard. So if this happened and you hit the treadle and powered up the sewing machine, the needle would break or you'd hear a large bang. And it would likely damage a part on the bottom side. If this has happened to you, a telltale sign is shredding of the thread above the eye of the needle or your thread breaking. This may be a sign that some metal parts below have been struck and they need to be repaired or replaced. Let's inspect the two most obvious parts that may be damaged if you see shredding thread. That is the retaining ring cap spring and the gib hook. These two black fingers hold the retaining ring in place. Move them away and the retaining ring and the gib hook will come out. The retaining ring cap spring is the thin metal piece on top with the triangular opening. If it's been damaged, you may have to replace it. The hook is this. 
The point of the hook needs to be smooth as seen here. These parts are not damaged, but we do have some parts that show damage. Here is a retaining ring with the retaining ring cap spring screwed onto the top of it, and you can see that there is a serious needle blow here. This will cause damage to the thread, and that damage will be visible above the eye of the needle usually. And here's a hook with a very small needle strike in it. You can feel it with your fingernail. It's not smooth here. This type of damage can typically be buffed out with an emery cloth or a fingernail file. If the point is damaged, you may have to replace the hook itself. This small puck can actually cause damage to the thread, so if it's smooth, it'll probably work. The cap spring is replaced by removing these two screws. Each machine comes with one extra cap spring. For more detailed information about the repair or replacement of the hook and or retaining ring cap spring, refer to the guidebook that comes with each leatherwork sewing machine. Thread tension adjustment is next. Before sewing a project, it's always wise to test your tension in some scrap. Here we place a piece of leather under our presser foot, lower our presser foot, hold the trailing threads, and start sewing. We'll sew a few inches and then check on both the top side and bottom side to see what our stitch tension looks like. Lift the presser foot and pull the assembly out. The top side looks great, the knot is not visible. And the bottom side, the knot is also not visible, so this tension is just about perfect. To show poor tensioning, we're going to release some of the upper tension. There's a lot of adjustment of this upper tension assembly knob. We're going to release the knob fully by at least six full revolutions. Now we'll place our leather under the presser foot and sew an inch. And then we'll tighten the tension knob about one full turn. Then we'll sew another inch and we'll repeat the process. So what we want to show in the end is the effects of not having enough upper tension having just about the right upper tension, and having too much upper tension. So we're going to continue to repeat this process, turning the knob a half revolution twice, or a full revolution, I should say. Here we're going to turn our leather around so we can continue to sew, because we have more tensionability. One more full revolution in the knob, and the front is beginning to fall off because the post is sticking out. Not a big deal. It just means we have a lot of upper tension. Now we'll back off the upper tension since it's almost getting ready to fall off here by one full revolution. And we'll lift the presser foot and remove the assembly from under our presser foot. The top side actually looks good everywhere except for maybe at the end here when you can see the knot is being pulled up to the top side. It's not all the way on the top side but it's getting close. Look at the bottom side, where we began, there's not enough tension, and you can see the knot. Now the knot starts to disappear here, so this is optimal tension. And then here, this looks good, but there's obviously too much tension because the knot is on the top side. So you have a lot of tension adjustment with the Sayrite Leatherwork Sewing Machine. In general, you only want enough tension so that the knot on the bottom side is pulled into the leather assembly, and no more. When you're sewing your sample for tension adjustment, be sure to check tension in both forward and reverse stitching. Adjusting pressure foot tension is next. The amount of downward pressure put on the material by the presser foot is controlled by the pressure regulating thumb screw. This screw compresses the long coil spring above the presser foot. We've turned the screw clockwise to increase downward foot pressure. For leather, sometimes having too much downward pressure can create more tractor marks or foot marks on the leather. Some of these can be buffed out, but excessive pressure downwards can sometimes lead to more tractor marks. By releasing some of the pressure foot pressure, you can reduce the amount of marks that the presser foot may make in your leather, especially if it's a sensitive leather like this one. However, if you have a dense assembly, you may need to increase the foot pressure. The guidebook that comes with the Leatherwork sewing machine will cover this topic in more detail. Please refer to it. Here you can see the first stitch where more pressure was applied made more marks in the leather, but the second stitch did not make as many. 
Sayerite has designed the presser foot bottom in the feed dog top to be gentle while still having enough grip to feed leather assemblies. In the end, we believe we have accomplished both goals, a good feeding mechanism for leather and one that is gentle to sensitive leather surfaces. Next, we'll discuss optimal foot height. The Sayerite Leatherwork sewing machine was designed to sew assemblies of up to a quarter inch in thickness, but sometimes pushing assemblies that thick under the presser foot may seem difficult. But there is a trick to getting optimal foot lift. By rotating the balance wheel towards you, you can find the optimal position where the outer feet and the center foot are even and the needle is just slightly above it. Here's a forward view. We continue to rotate the balance wheel towards us until both the center foot and the outer feet are even with each other, and here is the optimal foot lift to get thick assemblies underneath the sewing machine. If you're having sewing machine problems, the first step is to replace the needle. A blunt tip can cause popping noises, where a bent needle can cause skip stitches. To replace the needle, use a slotted screwdriver and loosen the needle screw. There's no need to remove the screw completely, just loosen it. Now you can grab the needle and pull the needle downwards. This removes the needle from the needle bar. To insert a new needle, push it into the needle bar. If you view the needle bar from the left side, you'll see a hole. The needle must be inserted all the way up to the uppermost portion of that hole. We'll tighten it down here, then inspect to make sure it's rotated appropriately. There is a long groove in the needle, and that must be facing towards the left. Here a fingernail is being run up and down inside of that groove. Facing towards the throat of the machine, or the right side, there is a scarf, which is a small indent right above the eye of the needle. If the needle is not inserted in this manner, release the set screw, rotate the needle, and then lock that set screw down again until it is. The speed adjustment of the workhorse servo motor is next. Depending on the type of project you're sewing, you may want to change the top end speed of the machine. Typically, the workhorse servo motor is set up and sent out with a speed of 30. To change the top end speed, press the P button, then press the S button twice. You'll now see a flashing red dot behind the number. Continue to press the S button until the desired speed between 5 and 45 is displayed. After reaching the desired speed, press the P button. Now that speed is programmed into the workhorse servo motor. Even at this high speed, you'll still have the excellent slow speed control you've come to expect, but your top end speed is now increased. Now let's set the top end speed at the slowest it can possibly go, 5. Again, the P button was pressed, the S button was pressed twice, and then we press the S button until we reach the desired top end speed. Then we press the P button again. Now the Leatherwork sewing machine will only sew at the top end speed of 5, which is very, very slow as you can see. We hope you enjoy your new Sayerite Leatherwork sewing machine. If you have any questions, be sure to give us a call. We're glad to help. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayerite, thanks for watching.